Welcome back everyone. Here's an unpopular opinion. Unfortunately, saying go to go home or getting the president to quit his office isn't going to solve Sri Lanka's economic crisis. It will certainly create a constitutional crisis and then on top of it, a leadership crisis. Oh wait, we are already there, right? No leaders in this country. Right now, Sri Lanka has an economic crisis. And instead of solving that issue, all of us are talking about getting rid of a leader and creating another power vacuum and to create instability in the country because apparently, according to the idiots in the streets, that's the way to solve an economic crisis. See, when the supply chain crisis hit Sri Lanka, we saw long lines at petrol sheds, gas dealers, pharmacies, and even in some instances, grocery stores. There was a real crisis brewing behind the scene. It led to the display of the real voice of the people. Now, up until that moment, the government acted like that there was no crisis. In fact, former finance minister Basil Rajapaksa seems to have rejected it flat out. Then I explained that we are heading towards a huge financial crisis. Soon after my speech, Minister of Finance, newly appointed Minister of Finance, uh, Basil Rajapaksa, told the parliamentary group that there is no such financial crisis. Minister Gammampili is seeing crocodiles in the teacup, right? There is a there is a sh uh, shortage in uh, foreign currencies at the moment because of a manipulation done by several bank officers. I am going to solve this within two weeks. Now, when the government is not doing their job, it's indeed the right of the people to protest. Force the government to do their job. In every country, you see the right to protest as an essential to the democratic process. But never does it say that it's the methodology a nation will determine and mandate towards governance. Now, when the protests were mushrooming across the nation due to the supply chain breakdown, the real voice of the people became very vocal. The government understood this and started to take steps to find ways and means to sort the matter out. Ran to India, ran to Bangladesh, begged from the EU, the US and the rest of the world. We were looking for friends frantically and desperately, hoping that borrowings and swaps would help calm the jittery nerves of the public and bring order to that real voice generated from the grassroots level. Alas, it was not enough. The supply chain crisis continues and the government seems to have not found a real solution to the problem. We saw angry people from various parts of the country getting restless that voice became so loud that it came to the point where the government, which had a policy decision to reject help from institutions like the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, was changing its tune and finally said that they'll go and seek support at the very place they denounce. Finally, the leaders were changing their t arrogant tune according to the beat of the people. The beat of the real people on the ground. And they were able to make policy changes of the government. Now, sitting on the sidelines were the usual haters of the Rajapaksa family. The supporters of the opposition, the ones that were bitter, that their law, uh, loving long-time leader Rani Vikramasinghe and now the opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, who lost power within a mere five years. And when they couldn't take that defeat and was waiting for a crack in the system to start their usual Rajapaksha bashing, got their Christmas gift way early this year. And mind you, it was not because these anti-Rajapaksha sentiments took things uh, to hand to disrupt. The government themselves, by failing to foresee a crisis, by failing to calculate risk during a pandemic, by failing to take action at the correct time, by failing to be leaders, paved the way for their enemies to capitalize on their failures.
Now, due to the inability and failure of this government and the president to take control of the supply chain uh, issue and rectify it, those guys sitting on the sidelines saw an excellent opportunity to ride the wave of protests and revive their failed campaigns uh, thanks to the real voice of the people. This is where they came up with the catchy slogan and well-organized protest lines, hoping that by shadowing the actual protest and issues of the people, they would be able to resurface their real agenda of overthrowing the Rajapaksas. Unfortunately, this time around, not through a democratic process, but through an unlawful way, shrewdly hiding a very catchy idea of protests. So they were successful in systematically hijacking the real voice of the people and now rebranding with their slogans. The call is no longer to provide essential items or rectify the issues or find solutions to the economic crisis. But this time around, to, um, the 2015 slogans that later proved to be fake and bogus, corruption, stealing money uh, and the usual family rule accusation, uh, and mind you, um, the latter was not without reason. All that took center stage. Api me governor ticket ba geniye na wa? Ani varring raje eleven ka ang api me governor geniye na. Watala na, gota be rajapaksa ba gedera arla thamai me wat wa satani wala karan ni gela matag ka na kamo. Me rajapaksa paula Lanka desa pal ning atu kaala dan tan kaali avil na. Now, well, this goes for about a week, and guess who well, else sees the opportunity to utilize the people's cry for real issues for something so vain? Mind you, we still haven't solved the fundamental problem of the people power crisis, fuel shortage, gas shortage, and, the, and of course the dollar crisis. So, in this instant, in comes Sri Lanka's useless and the most worthless, most unproductive, and the most idiotic individuals of all social media influencers, and then, of course, followed by some artists. They see this as the best opportunity to increase their profile liking and get some clout for their failing image. Some even hoping for a resurgence of their acting career. So you see, well-dressed, with protest attire and catchy looks, you know, with bandanas, with nice, nice catchy phrases, they're on the streets. Of course, until uh, they take the picture and post it on social media. With the worthlessness of the influencers comes the other kind that's looking for a good time. The school boys and girls. After being educated by the teachers, of course, who taught them that you got to protest despite the countries going down the hill. The school boys and girls are now joining in on the fun with dances and excitement just to have a good time. After all, they couldn't uh, you know, have some fun for many, many, many months. That is thanks to COVID. ಬಾರೇ <laughs> 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 money 
the authentic voice of the people that actually was looking like it could make policy changes in how this country was governed, and in fact it did happen in some instance, is now being turned into a circus where fun, excitement and a big match carnival atmosphere rules. Listen to this protest organizer who honestly is fed up with the whole thing, who understood that their real voice is now just a joke of a song, dance and a merry time. <laughs> Why are you sitting down? Minister, at the bar, we are not going to take up. Never mind. 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 Never all right, joining me now is other than a contributor and political analyst, Malinda Senviratna. Malinda, thank you very much for your time. What do you think uh, the end game for these protesters uh, might be? Clearly, the Constitution doesn't uh, guarantee them the very claim these protesters hope uh, would happen, basically overthrow uh, an elected leader. Now, does it look like these protesters want Sri Lanka to be a pariah state? Well, uh, uh, thanks for having me here, Mahesh. Now, uh, Going by the slogans, or let's say the most popular slogan that we are hearing right, right now, hashtag uh, go to go home, uh, a, a quick short answer would be that is exactly what uh, is desired. But then uh, that, that's a simple, easy and probably a very incomplete answer. These protests are also about frustrations people are regarding the difficulties uh, that the general public is feeling. Uh, and uh, a, a general uh, dissatisfaction with the way things are being done uh, and, and the entire political system and political culture of our, of our country. Uh, targeting the president seems uh, kind of, uh, you know, a natural, easy uh, thing and uh, I'm sure there are pe people who really want that. Regardless of uh, constitutional constraints, if they want to work outside the constraint, uh, out of the constitution, that's a different matter, but within the constitution, of course, there are, uh, it's easier said than, than done. Uh, uh, you know, people change, people, elections uh, um, take place, uh, leaders are popular, they fall out of popularity and so on. Uh, but, uh, you know, we haven't done a, uh, Done a, done a kind of a poll on, on all these things, but uh, we can say that uh, uh, that is the objective that is expressed most widely. Indeed, uh, Malinda, uh, evidently there's a lack of leadership. We have to agree on that. The politicians don't want to do their job, uh, the president is inactive, uh, the presidency is inactive, and the government is hoping that someone will take the power and run the country. As the people of this nation, what is left for us to do in a situation like this? Well, we can we elect people into power and we uh, and we elect them out, uh, we chase them out. But uh, right now, people are demanding that their representatives actually represent them and their interests and uh, respond to their their you know, the critical issues that they are they are facing. What the people can do in a situation where. There doesn't seem to be there where the government is absolutely inactive and no one wants to take on the task of resolving these problems. Uh, maybe the people can push uh, for some kind of reform, political reform, uh, in terms of it's easier again said than done, uh, in terms of constitutional reform uh, change, uh, but uh, also. Uh, demand a mechanism where people who can develop solutions to these problems uh, are in positions that enable them to do so. Indeed, uh, interesting. Malinda, now uh, one of the most significant claims by the protesters is that the current president has lost his mandate, uh, where 6.9 million um, are no longer with him. That's what they say. They are basing this uh, on the number of protests mushrooming island wide. Uh, is that the same sentiment that you also share and you also see? Well, uh, Mahesh, the thing is we have no way of determining how m many of the 6.9 million are still uh, supporting the president, but then uh, in times like this, it's those who are, there are various people claiming I voted for Gota, but I, know I hate him now, that kind of thing, but you know, how, how do we really measure that? We can get a sense of that, uh, whether the government or the president has lost his mandate, uh, if there's an outpouring of support for him from those who... Uh, 
who who voted for him, then we can have some measurement of that. But in in these kinds of situations, not necessarily only due to his fault, uh, we are in a situation where everyone is suffering. Those who voted for him and those who didn't. Uh, it's hard to to measure. But claims in these kinds of situations are a dime a dozen. You know, you can come up with all kinds of theories. Uh, that is good for sloganeering. That's good for rhetoric. Uh, uh, and uh, you know we really don't know uh, how these things are going to unfold in the next few days, uh, next few months. Who knows? But uh, that 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 has to be measured in some other kind of way. As change is not always uh, you know obtained by by a majority. Sometimes a small group of people can. Uh, can get a lot of things transformed for the good or the bad. I mean, it can be for the good or it can be disastrous. Uh, but right now is not the moment where we can actually conclude anything definite uh, regarding this. Understood. Well, all right. Let's leave it at that. Malin, this is Nibir Ratna, the Internet Contributor and Political Analyst. Thank you very much. Let's take a short commercial break. On the other side, we'll take a look at the legal aspect of all this.